SpaceX has had quite a few revisions of their two-stage reusable launch vehicle prototype, alongside quite a few name changes, from the Mars Colonial Transport to the Starhopper prototype to the SN naming. Starship has evolved quite a bit. This video will cover a general outline of the evolution behind SpaceX's Starship, although it is by no means a comprehensive history. So with that in mind, let's hop into the evolution of SpaceX's Starship, starting with the MCT. In 2012, Elon Musk was floating an idea for a Mars colonial transport, which would transport colonists to Mars, as the name implies. While the concept continued, the name quickly changed, as Musk believed SpaceX's vision could go further. Welcome to the Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS, which Musk unveiled in 2016. The new name faced a new design, which, when revealed in 2017, noted 40 crew cabins with a total capacity of 100 people. However, that design was short-lived, when Musk announced a new revision a year later, which now sported three rear fins and two front fins. Alongside a new revision came a new name two months later, Starship. Well, Starship and Super Heavy, with the vehicle having an official name for the upper and booster stages of SpaceX's design, Musk went into a complete overhaul of the ship's previous specs. The process started quite suddenly with the January 2019 announcement that Starship would consist of a stainless steel construction rather than a carbon fiber one. To call that a surprise would be an understatement. Carbon fiber was touted as the next best thing in spacecraft assembly, thanks to its relatively low density and high strength. Now, Musk was to use stainless steel? At 7,500 kilograms per square meter, a stainless steel Starship would weigh four times more than a carbon fiber one with the same design. Nonetheless, Musk and others supported the sudden change by citing stainless steel's lower manufacturing costs, higher productability, and a higher than 1,500 degrees Celsius melting point. And like that, SpaceX rolled out the Starhopper. This low-altitude test vehicle was constructed with a counterintuitive new design approach and rolled out to develop control algorithms and prove the Raptor engine could function as intended. Additionally, if Starhopper managed to take off, Musk could prove stainless steel as a high-durability, no-insulation-required, high-weight carbon fiber replacement. And well, it worked. Starhopper hopped 20 meters into the air on July 25, 2019, with another 150 meters on August 27, successfully using a Raptor engine during the flight. And just like that, SpaceX went back to work, pulling out the Mark 1, or Starship Mark 1, at Musk's September 2019 Starship update presentation. During the update, Musk revealed that landing would rely on six landing legs and ceramic heat tiles. In addition, he mentioned a payload of 120,000 kilograms when the vehicle was empty. Shortly thereafter, there was the little introduction of the 50-meter tall and 9-meter wide Mark 1 prototype, weighing in at 200 tons. This prototype was to test flight and re-entry. Well, at least before it exploded during its November 20th pressure test. Back to the drawing board, SpaceX went to work on the Mark II, before announcing the same day that they were canceling the Mark I and Mark II development to focus on the new Mark III and IV. Unfortunately, the Mark IV was canceled just a few weeks later, with Musk announcing that Starship SN1 would become their primary focus. SN was to be SpaceX's newest naming format, with the Mark III renamed SN1. Now focusing on this prototype, SpaceX began adjusting the design slightly, with new stamped and welded parts. According to Musk, the new production method reduced mass by 20% in the affected regions. SN1 began testing in January 2020, with the intentional destruction of tanks during pressurization tests. While the vehicle's first test made it to a pressure of 7.1 bar, the second hit 7.5 bar, and the third, 8.5 bar. Starship tanks were deemed safe for human flight with these tests, having reached 1.4 times the mandated safety pressure. Now, with flight-ready tanks, SpaceX began stacking SN1's parts in February 2020, before the vehicle's cryogenic pressurization test destroyed the prototype. Following the incident, Musk set an aspirational goal for an orbital flight via SN5 or 6 by the end of 2020. In the meantime, SpaceX went back to the drawing board with SN3 and 4, designed for short flights and longer flights respectively. Unfortunately, SN3 crushed itself on April 3, 2020, after a configuration error caused nitrogen reserves to leak and the methane tanks to destroy the vehicle. 
SN4 lasted until May 29th, when a static fire test caused the prototype to explode after a quick disconnect failed. Ironically, SN4 survived a methane fuel-powered fire 10 days earlier before exploding from the fire test. Musk and SpaceX got back to work, with total developmental forces focused on SN5 and SN6, centering on fixing Starship's past weaknesses. And it worked. SN5 faced a successful static fire test on July 30th, with a 150-meter flight successfully occurring on August 4th. Thus, SN5 served as SpaceX's first official Starship flight, if you don't consider Starhopper's quite different design. Nonetheless, this was a huge moment. SN5 was proof that SpaceX can put a Starship into space, even if the test flight only went up 150 meters. Even still, just a few weeks afterward, SN6 completed its static fire test on August 24th. That was before its 150-meter high launch on September 3rd. With two successful launches out of the last two attempts, it was time to launch SN7. However, SpaceX pressed its tank to failure, so let's ignore that one. On to SN8. SpaceX's main goal for this prototype was to include 304L stainless steel, add three Raptor engines, and have the prototype potentially land. SN8 was indeed the first planned flight for SpaceX, as Musk had planned a 15-kilometer flight. With a 1-in-3 chance for a successful landing, SN8 could have also served as the first successful Starship landing. However, I use the words could have as SN8's altitude was lowered to 12.5 kilometers from 15 and ended up exploding on landing impact on December 9th. It turns out everything was perfect with this prototype except for its methane header tank, which lost pressure, caused SN8 to lose thrust, and failed to produce enough power for a landing burn. Now on to SN9. Starship was ready for a successful landing. On December 11th, Starship was placed out on its platform, prepared for launch. The stand beneath the prototype was deformed, though, and it fell into the high bay, damaging a canard fin. SpaceX rolled the now-repaired vehicle back out to the launch site, underwent six static fires and two engine swaps in January 2021, alongside a 10-kilometer flight and an explosion on February 2nd. While the methane header tank worked, the oxygen pre-burner failed to ignite pre-landing, and SN9 hit the ground with an explosion. During the struggle with SN9, SpaceX rolled out SN10, which now faced a 60% chance of a landing success. This prototype faced two launch attempts on March 3rd. The first had too much thrust when throttling, and the second was successful, having even landed. However, three of the six landing legs weren't locked in place, leading to a methane leak which resulted in SN10 exploding eight minutes after landing. Attempting to fix this new issue, SpaceX moved SN11 to suborbital pad B on March 8. Following successful testing, it launched with a 10-kilometer altitude in mind. Everything was going well for SN11 until Engine 2 caught on fire, and the prototype lost telemetry thanks to a methane leak. And with that, every part of SN11 disintegrated or hit the ground. With SpaceX now a little frustrated, they moved to SN12, where parts were stacked, then scrapped. Okay, what about SN13? The company didn't complete construction on SN13 or SN14. How about SN15? Well, that's a little different. Musk had introduced the prototype by referencing SpaceX's introduction of improved avionics software, propellant architecture, Raptor engine designs, engine configurations, and the addition of a Starlink antenna. With a rollout on April 8th, SN15 passed all tests and static fires before its May 5th launch. This launch targeted a 10-kilometer high-altitude test, which went successfully. The prototype even landed with a soft touchdown, where the only issue was a small fire, which SpaceX quickly extinguished. Now with a successful landing, SpaceX had every reason to go full steam ahead on future prototypes. Well, that didn't happen. SN16 sat fully stacked for weeks inside the high bay before removal. SpaceX scrapped SN17 without any rollout, and SN18 and SN19 faced complete suspension. SN20 survived development and was the first prototype to be planned for testing at a second stage. It also had Starship's first significant heat shield tile system on a ship intended to reach an orbital altitude. According to current SpaceX plans, SN20 will enter the upper atmosphere, 
accelerate to orbital velocity, test body flaps, altitude control, and the heat shield as the ship re-enters our atmosphere at hypersonic speeds. While SN20 rolled out on August 5th, it hasn't yet completed pressurization or static fire tests. However, unlike past tests, SN20 will come prepared with the Booster 4, a super heavy booster. In total, Booster 4 will come prepped with 29 Raptor engines, 28 more than Mark 1's test. The top stage of SN20, the Starship, will likely have six Raptors for a total of 35. That's just four Raptor engines less than Elon Musk's final Starship plans. However, we don't know if SN20 will be successful or not. It just hasn't launched. So with that in mind, what do you all think? Will SN20 make it deeper in the history books than it already is? How do you feel about SpaceX's progress within just the last two years? Let us know in the comments down below and make sure to subscribe for more Starship news as it unfolds.